Hey guys, it's Choco the Chocobo here. In this episode, we're going to be talking to you about the next Dota 2 basic, which is ganking. Um, ganking is in reference to, you know, having your, you can be alone, you can be with teammates, uh, but the idea is that you're moving in a way that's not conventional, so not in lane, uh, and you're basically going for the kill on an enemy hero. So, like, in if you're in bottom shame. lane, for example, you catch a hero out here, uh, that's not really ganking. Some people may refer to it as that. It's I think it's not a proper way to you know refer to that moment because I think it's just an aggressive play but uh, for me ganking is whenever you go out of your way so if you're like at middle and you transition to bottom for an attack on a hero which is called a gank in my world uh, that to me is like the proper way to denote that so let's get right into it <laughs> um, what I'm going to be doing is instead of doing it in like a live game where there's too many variables and stuff I'm going to show you what I think are really awesome common gank paths so I'm going to divvy up the video into the radiant side gank paths and then the dire side gank paths um, and also at the very beginning of each section, what I'll do is I'll talk about what I think um, are incredibly strong gang paths for the start of the game. So uh, let's get right into it. I'll wait for the announcer to finish. The battle begins. The battle begins. Okay. So early ganking, right? Early ganking is mostly in reference to level one ganks. Uh, for the kind of beginner level, uh, there's only a handful of ganks that you realistically will be doing or should be doing. Just because it doesn't, it's not very practical. Uh, for early ganking, though, one very crucial and rather uh, game-changing component is the runes, right? So, uh, just kind of refresh your memory if you don't remember. Runes spawn starting from the zero-minute mark every two minutes. Now, the zero-minute mark rune um, is very, very important because you have time to set up for the rune, and it's called rune guarding, right? Yeah. So, um, at the very start of the game, instead of like hanging over here by the tower where you're kind of inactively doing stuff, and even blocking creeps, you know, kind of slowly trying to block them from reaching the engagement point. Uh, that's all great and dandy, but I think a better use of your time and energy is to rune guard. Because what this does is it gives you coverage of two very specific runes that are incredibly dangerous. Um, as well as two other runes that are like, alright, and then the third, four, or fifth one, which is, you know, not terribly useful. But at least you know it's there. Uh, so, Naturally. the runes that are of particular interest to an early gank are haste and double damage. These two runes are incredibly useful because it almost guarantees a first blood. Uh, double damage, obviously doubling how much damage output you have early on is incredible on heroes that attack somewhat quickly. Uh, in conjunction to that haste, it kind of keeps you engaged, it keeps you near them, and your positioning is just so much more powerful. They can actually, uh, more reliably than not, attack them in some way. If you are a hero with a disable, it becomes more powerful, right? So those two runes are incredibly useful, um, and you mean if you don't remember runes and stuff, you can go back in the maps video. I think I talk about it there. So those are runes um, that I, that are like kind of I think almost guaranteed first blood runes. Now if you talk about the other two ones, it would be illusion and invisibility, like the one I have right here. Um, illusion is a little bit more difficult, especially at the beginner level, because it does contribute some damage. But the trade-off is that even though you get a little bit more damage, it's not going to do that much, and you have to micro them, and it gets a little bit complicated. But the, it still gives you a fair shake at trying to kill someone. Um, and honestly, just selecting them all, right-clicking on the enemy hero, should be enough. Now, the last one here, the Invis rune. Invis is really handy in terms of if you have something that needs to be set up, right? So let's say that you're Alina, and you want to land your stun you know, just right. If you pick up the invis, you have a better shot of positioning yourself correctly without the enemy's knowledge um, to encourage them to kind of go into the open for a good gank. That said, invis also can be used to kind of keep the enemy unaware or even scout the enemy position before it actually engages um, at the engagement point. And by the way, I've been, I said an engagement point twice now. Engagement point is referencing where that first wave hits in contact. So it's about here for the radiant side on the bottom. Actually, it's for either side. So it's here on the bottom, smack dab in the middle for the river, and then, of course, uh, up top is going to be uh, like the mirror side of the radiance. So uh, very, very important to know. And, you know, the invis rune can be helpful to kind of scout out the position, but generally speaking, you're going to know where they're coming from. So that's that. Uh, the last rune, the regen rune, does absolutely nothing for you. I mean, it might help you after a level 1 gank and that you can heal kind of all your properties back and then be able to go back into lane. Uh, but in terms of the actual gank itself, it's not very handy, right? So, uh, not much merit there. <laughs> so let's get right down to it. Let's talk about ganking paths. So, the most common and most deadly gank, hands down, 
uh, in Dota early on is on, again, I call it long lane, other people call it short lane. Uh, but I, I love long lane ganks because what it does is, let's say that you rune guard and you pick one up. If you hide behind this set of, like, these set of trees right here, you break their line of sight. They can't see you coming up. And the only way for them to see you, if you're set up in about here, is if they walk right there, in which case they're past the wood line, you can kind of go after them if you're all set up properly. Or they have to come up here, or you have to reveal yourself. So um, there is like some weird stuff, obviously, right? Like if Beastmaster throws his axes and chops down the trees, your cover's blown. But uh, very, very seldom in the beginner Bye, level, and off. even sometimes towards the intermediate, do people actually expect a very early gank, which makes this a very powerful tool. Uh, so something to keep in mind. I advise that you do a three-man gank. It has the highest chance of success in terms of like it doesn't look too shady for the other lanes because only one lane might be missing, and uh, that's that's my personal advice. But uh, take it or leave it. That said, if they creep block or in general even, um, a lot of people will prefer to loop up this way, right? And that's because they're going to be pushing down through lane like this, right? They're going to be pushing with their creep wave, and they'll hit about here before they fight. They might creep block, and they might even go here. If you loop down from the bottom you're going to give them plenty of time to run back and reposition themselves. Your ranged characters won't be able to like maximize the damage output if they're running backwards, uh, which most people will do in response to an early gank. If you go up here, your positioning will be great. Your ranged heroes will have the maximum amount of distance where they don't have to reposition, and it's really, really handy, right? Um, bear in mind, they will try to duck and cover probably this way, uh, trying to shake you, but don't be deterred. You know, Focus on a weak character and go for it. Um, a very, very basic premise of ganking is to go for a hero that has no escape, if possible, and then kind of look for the weakest one of those. So uh, the general way I tell it is I look at, number one, do they have a blink or some kind of really strong escape mechanism like Windrunner's uh, Windrun? If not, then the next criteria becomes, well, which one has uh, a higher health point, right? Because the more health they have, the harder it is generally to take them down. There are some minor exceptions to that, but I mean, for the most part, that's the way it should work. Uh, so intelligence heroes are really, really susceptible to this gank, which is handy. Um, so that's that. That's the long lane gank. You can do a river gank. This is very, very shady, right? Like you pick up the rune and go straight up that way. Wouldn't recommend it. You can do it. I personally wouldn't do it. Um, so that's that. So just in the same way for the dire side, the dire have the long lane as here as well where you can gank now for the setup it's a little bit more difficult so for here you can see it's almost a straight line of trees right it's pretty easy to hide behind for here you have to hide right behind this set of trees right here um if you if you set up incorrectly you'll notice that the line of sight breaks very easily and they'll spot you in daylight now it's nighttime so you can't really tell but if this was daytime that would break vision you would be able to see north of you and they can spot your gank a little bit early uh, what's more is that this little engagement point is a little bit less uh, cluttered I guess which makes it a little bit more difficult to sustain a gank if they do spot you uh, but that is there and something to definitely keep in mind also you'll notice that if you gank this way this like kind of secondary option to run away and juke you in does not exist so uh, this is a little bit harder for the dire side but it can also be a lot more rewarding if you catch them because if they go all the way back here and you shut down the right side this left side has absolutely zero escape potential um, even with a quelling blade because in here you can chop down this tree that's located right there and kind of weasel your way out. Here there is no such opportunity. You are looking at a straight kill in terms of if they duck in here, they either have to TP or they get killed. Um, very, very handy, very good. Yeah. Now, that said, again, same mechanical principle. You're gonna go around and behind them to maximize the damage output you can get. Uh, the other kinds of gangs that kind of exist that I just wanna mention real quick is you can do like kind of a really hyper aggressive ganking, right? So you can do ganks where Ooh, your entire team mobilizes lady. very quickly and you can try to pick someone off before they get to a certain location. Um, and this can be done to counter rune guard. So sometimes the radiant side will come up like this and they'll all set up for a gank around here. Now a smoke of deceit is pretty par for the course in terms of getting you there faster. That said, beginner level, intermediate level, probably not needed. On my way. Probably this gank is going to be a great one either, so I, I wouldn't do it. You can, I personally wouldn't recommend it. Um, for the dire side, very similar to this. You can kind of press up very aggressively and hook around. Uh, that's up to you though. So that is there for you if you do want to do it or you can like hook around this way. Now let's talk about the mid gank because that's a neutral kind of ganking zone. It's both for radiant, radiant and dire. The radiant side has a bit of a 
interesting position as a gang spot, right? Because there are two major contributing factors to why this is a weird place to gang. Number one, the distance between the tower and your engagement point is really, really low. So early on, it's not really a great gang spot. That being said, number two, you also have to worry about the hill. If you're a ranged character and you're shooting uphill, you have a higher chance of missing, which makes it a highly more defensible position if you start at the engagement point itself. You have to basically set up up the hill so I um, in an effort to kill them, which can be kind of a problem. But there is one major merit to doing a mid gank if you can pull it off correctly. It is the most, <clears throat> it is the simplest, sorry, five man gank to do in the game. Uh, what ends up happening is you pull all your resources, and because this has the fastest engagement speed pretty much, you're going to be pulling everyone, and your idea is that you want to go in right as that engagement happens, if their hero is there, or if you catch them off guard and like going for the runes, and you collapse onto them. So very, very deadly if you get it off correctly, but again, very, very difficult to do. can be very rewarding, can also be a really big problem. Um, it also has a really quick dispersion rate in terms of your heroes can all kind of wander back to their lanes and you know fix themselves back up. In Sylvan Shade. <coughs> So you know that's all the early gang stuff, but let's talk about like later and or <clears throat> late game kind of ganks, right? What can you expect? Well, for ganking, there's gonna be two major tools for you to use. One is wards for yourself for aggressive uh, vision, as well as smoke at deceit, which is a counter aggressive vision wards or defensive wards. Um, both are very very important. If you take a ward and let's say you get coverage of this rune spot here, and you can look at the warding video for a little bit more of ideas of where you can ward. Um, if you end up warding over here and you notice that there's you know a low health guy kind of creeping around the woods just jungling thinking he's safe, that can offer a really great gank opportunity to throw him back. Now note, if it's a jungler, right? If it's someone who's just been jungling the whole game, if you kill him, the it's an almost 100% unreliable gold pool, which is incredibly bad if they get picked off before they buy an item. It's, it's really, really just lousy for them. Um, so something to look out for. It can be very helpful. A lot of times you'll have warding in the enemy jungle in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, some people will ward here to block the neutral camps for the dire side. For radiant side, they'll be over here. And you might be able to see them. You might even have your rune control wards, like maybe one over here, which can spot them on this side of the jungle. Or for the dire side, you may have one located here, or even here, which is, yeah, you know, I talk about the warding video. But, you know, there's, there's some opportunities there to do some work, to notice where they are, to figure out their positioning, and take advantage of it. Um, so those are very good. That said, Smoke of Deceit is an item that's kind of misunderstood by players at the moment, in my opinion. Um, a lot of people use it without really thinking. If the enemy team is not buying wards, there's no point in using the Smoke of Deceit. It doesn't help you in any way, really, besides the movement speed. Um, or if they're, like, they're super unaware. Because if you're running for a direct engagement, chances are you're not going to be set up in such a way that the smoke is going to have a high impact without traveling under ward detection. That said, if there are wards, smoke will be your best friend. You won't show up on the minimap, you won't show up anywhere, which means that you can smoke into Roshan, for example, and get there cleanly without anyone seeing you unless there's a sentry ward, which they can spot you in, but they can't actually see on the minimap. So it's a good way to kind of hide under detection, give yourself a little bit of movement speed, and really get the jump on an enemy team. But again, you know, if they're not warding very well, no real reason to get it. If you're not sure, it's always a safe bet. It costs 100 gold, it's not a big deal. Um, and can be very, very kind of influential in your gameplay. <coughs> Anyways, other than that, <coughs> excuse me, um, things to bear in mind for ganking in general, always look for heroes that have a incredibly uh, creep farmy dependency because your suppression value in terms of what you're gonna be able to take away from their gameplay is much more immense than a hero that is more of an aggressive ganker, right? Um, this goes into the gold discussion. You want to take down their unreliable pool as best you can. A lot about what Dota is, a lot of people will say, what makes a good, what makes a Dota team win is a gold advantage. It's because you have more items available to you. It has, a, it gives you a much steeper uh, kind of difference between what you have available as resources to your team versus the enemy team. Uh, so that gold advantage, that suppression. It's going to be a huge deal in terms of, let's say you have an anti-mage who's farming up a storm. If you gank him, it's a lot more useful than someone who is passive, you know, not farming very much. Um, although that can be, in its own right, very interesting, but for the most part, not really. Uh, you can even do something where you hit a jungler. Again, unreliable gold. You take it down a, a notch, a peg. can be very handy. Keep that in mind as you gank. 
obviously the softer squishier they are the better off you are if you get an agility hero out in the open you know they're a little bit squishier they have some of them don't have really great escape mechanisms can be very rewarding um <clears throat> one final kind of like side note about that though is that also remember the relative circumstance right so ganking a lane can help a lane immensely. It can also hurt a lane actually. So if you detract from other lanes, you're like sometimes people refer to the part where you just stay in lane as a laning phase, right? And then there's like the roaming phase where you all travel together. Different schools of thought will tell you different things. One thing to definitely note though, is that if you leave your lane, bear in mind that's open, that's free farming for the enemy team. So ganking has to be a very conscious decision by your team in order for you to make the best play out of it. If you're not going to produce anything and you've taken yourself out of lane, you only hurt your team. It does proactively take away from you. You can't always be aggressive and still reap all the benefits. So something to keep in mind, something to stay aware of. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoy this video, guys. Woohoo, I'm richer. All right, so I hope you enjoy the video, guys. I hope this helps out. Uh, if you liked it or if you didn't like it or if you have like feedback, whatever else, please let me know in the comments below. And other than that, have a great day, guys. Ciao.